So let's look here at this back pattern. You can see here we have these data sets here and we have a back pattern and we can hide it, but it will maintain the pattern. So to add a bar chart to background, we need to have a plugin. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plugin here. Say so plugins equals, and then I'm going to put in these curly braces and an array because you could have multiple plugins. And I'll just give this plugin name the bar pattern. So we create a pattern at the back. Of course, for this, then I need to create a constant bar pattern equal, and then in here an ID for bar pattern, and then next you're going to say here when would we like to draw it. The bar pattern should be behind the data sets, of course. So that will mean that we will draw it before data sets are drawn. So then I'm going to use the arguments, chart, arcs, and plugin options. And once we have this, what we're going to do here now is start to create an object destructuring with a constant equals chart. And if you don't know object destruction, please check out my other videos. I'm going to say here CTX. And then what we want to have here is the chart area. And uh, in the chart area, I want to have, well, let's see here, probably the top, the bottom, and the height. So that will be the most important ones, the uh, height. There we are. And then we will have the scales that we're going to say for the scales. We're going to say the X and Y coordinates, although I think we don't need the X coordinate. So once I have this, what I want to do here is two things. I want to have draw, let's draw the shape from top to bottom. So we're going to say here, uh, ctx.save to save all variables above. And then we say ctx. Dot. I'm going to say here, fill rectangle. And this fill rectangle will consist of a value which is basically the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the width of that pattern, and the height. We will know a few things already. We have the height here, so we can say here, this can be the height, um, like that. And then, what we can do here as well, we can say here for the uh, x coordinates, I guess, and the y coordinates, well, what we need here is the top for that. And then we can say here for the x coordinates, we will say here x dot get pixel for value. And this is basically a chart here functionality. And I'm going to use here then index number zero, which would mean the first one. Of course, if we do this, we get an error because I need to specify the width. Let's say here 10 pixels for now. I'll save that. Refresh. All right. As you can see here, we get this shape, but I want to have the full width of this. So how do we get this width? details and you can see here if you look here very carefully our height is sticking out a little bit so what you could do here minus 0 0.5 so we just have a little bit of basically the grid line here is 0 0.5 pixels so that's right just remove that tiny bit all right let's get the width here uh, the 10 pixels here so how do we calculate the width to calculate the width all we need to do here is we're going to say here constant width equals and i'm going to use here chart.get data set meta index zero which is for the first data set index and then we say data index zero dot width and if you're wondering how do i get all of this you say your constant equals save refresh all right and then if i just do a console log with the width save refresh open up you can see here we get the width, which is 408 if it was big screen and 43 if it's small. And if I expand this, it should gradually expand as well. So it is intelligent enough to understand the width of the exact bar. So if I grab this width, put that width in here, save, refresh, we have a problem. And the problem is it is not aligned. And the reason why it gets the index uh, number which is at the very center here so I need to just move it here to do that all I have to do is basically say for the width and we are starting basically here so we're going to say minus width divided by 2 if I save that refresh now it's aligned let's multiply this for all of them so what we're going to do here I can just remove this right now and I'm going to say here uh, we need to have for every data set here. So that would mean we're going to say here for the chart dot get data set meta. And this is just a built-in chart here as functionality. 
index zero dot data. And this here loops to every specific data item. And what we did here above, you can see here, we just grab only a specific element here or a piece of data. So what I want to do here, now I'll say for each. And with the for each, I'm going to say for every data point, comma, or oh, I need the index as well, because that will be the most important one, because you need to loop through this with the index. I'll put in here a function error expression. Let's cut out this item and put that in here. If I save this, and of course say here index, we should have now a proper background pattern. If I hide this, there you are, if you click on it, it jumps back nicely. And that's basically how to